Will the graduates to the degree of Bachelor of Arts please rise? Today, many of you here are washed in memories. Parents, you may be remembering your child's first day of kindergarten or first talent show, or maybe those nights in middle school when you wondered how your child would ever make it through high school, let alone college. Our faculty members might be remembering their own graduations when they wondered if their own ambitions and aspirations were too lofty or out of reach. And students, I imagine that even as you sit here on the precipice of a new adventure, you're awash in newfound nostalgia for your time at Grinnell, the friendships you've made, the ideas you've encountered, the mentorship you received, and the adventures you've had all over the world. It is my sincere hope that you have an abundance of many fond memories you'll treasure forever, as this is the kind of thing that college presidents are supposed to remind you of on commencement day. But today, I also want to celebrate and embrace the less fond memories you may have of your time in college. Today, I want to celebrate not only your successes and joys, but also the moments of discomfort and struggle you felt over the past four years. For these uncomfortable moments also were an important part of your life experience. While visiting campus several years ago, the novelist Charles Baxter quoted from his essay a letter to a fiction writer saying the following, the hardest part of being a writer is not the long hours of learning the craft, but learning how to survive the dark nights of the soul. Part of the deal of having a soul at all includes the requirement that you go through several dark nights. No soul, no dark nights. Let's replace the word writer with the phrase critical thinker, which all of you are to four years at Grinnell. And as wonderful as that sounds, there's a burden that comes with that. The long hours of academic work, the craft of thinking, is something you have mastered at this point. And the fact that you chose Grinnell and made it through four rigorous and challenging years here proves that you do have a soul. And so, in the infrequent yet inevitable dark nights that lay ahead, I hope that the fondest memories you have of Grinnell College will sustain you. But I also hope that your less fond memories will also bring you comfort. Remember the time a project you devoted yourself to for many weeks failed to yield the results you dreamed of. While you moved on to the next project, you didn't quit. Remember the friendship that didn't last the way you felt it would at first. While you made new friendships after that, maybe better ones. Remember the unexpected griefs that blindsided you while your community sustained you and showed you its collective strength. Remember that moment in your seminar where someone said something that really upset you, or the text your professor chose made you feel uncomfortable, or class discussion that went into a place you didn't want to go. Remember when you disagreed with administration, I know it's hard to imagine, um, and you fought to make yourself heard. <laughs> Well, remember that you endured those challenges. Remember that you wrestled with the ambiguity of those situations, and you came through them wiser, more experienced, and yes, tougher than you initially thought yourself to be. Our triumphs are only a small part of our record of success. And so today, I want to remind you that while I hope the fond memories will always be at the forefront of your mind, I expect that the last, less pleasant memories will be there too reminding you of who you are, of what you're capable of withstanding in terms of discomfort, and how strong you've become. Grinnell College is one of those places, rare in our culture, where people walk up around talking about the books and the ideas that saved their lives. And so it is a place where I can say that the writer, James Baldwin, saved my life. And many other people will know what I mean. As a middle-class black gay kid growing up in Baltimore, it meant everything to me to read the work of this clearly gay, brilliant, and worldly African-American man, whom my parents, and especially my father, deeply respected both for his brilliance and for his insistence on speaking out. He opened a small window in my mind about what was possible, about speaking the truth, about the worlds that were out there ready to be discovered about doing what you knew to be right no matter what. 
My favorite James Baldwin quote, quite relevant in these troubled times, comes from the last page of Notes of a Native Son. He wrote, hatred, which could, could destroy so much, never failed to destroy the man who hated, and this was an immutable law. It began to seem that one would have to hold in the mind forever two ideas which seemed to be in opposition. The first idea was the acceptance, the acceptance totally without rancor of life as it is and men as they are. In the light of this idea, it goes without saying that injustice is a commonplace. But this did not mean that one could be complacent, for the second idea was of equal power, that one must never in one's own life accept these injustices as commonplace, but must fight, with, fight them with all of one's strength. This fight begins, however, in the heart, and it now have been laid to my charge to keep my own heart free of hatred and despair. That last sentence is worth repeating. This fight begins, however, in the heart, and it now have been laid to my charge to keep my own heart free of hatred and despair. It is no secret that knowledge can be devastating. And the more we learn about the world's history and contemporary workings, the more tempting it will be to give in to hatred and despair. But Baldwin's admonition to avoid those very things is a wise one. Baldwin understood that his survival, his thriving, depended on his ability to grow comfortable with imperfection without accepting it as an end. We know that we all fail sometimes, but we must remember that we also succeed. People will disappoint us sometimes, but they will also amaze us. And our leaders will sometimes be far, far from ideal or even fail to meet the basic standards of decency or of our college motto, veritas et humanitas, truth and kindness or benevolence or humaneness. But those moments of recognizing our leaders' failures become the opportunities for the next generation of leaders to step forward as a chorus of outspoken, courageous voices. If you spend any time on campus during one of our alumni reunion weekends, you'll overhear Grinnell graduates waxing poetic about their time here. Though if you talk to them for a while, you'll also learn that even our most loyal alumni have more than just happy memories of their time here. They too had struggles and challenges and moments of intense discomfort. And without those moments, they would likely not have had the successful lives they had. They would not have had a liberal arts education in the fullest sense if the sole goal of Grinnell College had been to simply ensure comfort and pleasure for all of our students. You are Grinnellians and you're called to action. Whatever those actions might be, you'll soon discover. And I hope you can remember the advice of James Baldwin and look unflinchingly without hatred and despair at the world's injustices while simultaneously acting to correct them. And when you act, when is your time to speak, to create, to lead, to innovate, to inspire, you'll draw on a well of memories, the joyful and the uncomfortable ones both, to do something wonderful you can't even begin to imagine. And if those dark nights of the soul linger a little too long, come back and visit us. We are your community and we will always be here. In closing, I leave you with my warmest wishes and my greatest hopes. May you continue to flourish, bringing with you on your journey your visions of excellence, action, and the possibility for a better tomorrow. Good luck. I now request that everyone stand, if able, to receive the benediction. As this ceremony ends, we congratulate these graduates. As they go forth from Grinnell, grant them safety and strength as they grow and change in the years to come. May they have the support and resources they need to make important contributions to their communities throughout our world. May they always remember these years, draw on this community when necessary, mentor future Grinnellians when possible, and return often to visit their college home.
May the relationships they have developed on and off campus continue as friendships that help to feed their spirit in the peaks and valleys of life. As bright young leaders, help them to have the resources and courage to engage in their work where their knowledge and energy is most needed. May they find enjoyment in that work, happiness in their days, and keep love in their hearts. But above all, may they live in hope. With it, so much more is possible. We look to the future with great expectations from each of you. Peace be upon us all this day and always.